Hi there. In this video, um, I'm going to show you a couple more things about the labeling. So it's a continuation of video number 66, which is all about simple labeling in QGIS. The first bit I'm going to show you is just how to format the date um, in, a, in, a, in a better way, uh, rather than showing this sort of 2020-09-08, so it's the 8th of September 2020, I, I would like to say sort of the 8th of September 2020. Please something a bit more user friendly. So if you go to right hand mouse click, click on, on the um, layer and then go to properties. Click on our expression that we've got in there already. What you'll see in the date and time is something called format date. And that's got lots of options in there. Lots of um, things you could do and um, it's definitely worth having a, a read of. I'll double click on format date. Now we know that's where that text string comes from. Left pub date 10, I counting from the left, go along 10 characters from the field pub date and you get 2020-09-13 with dashes. So I'm going to put a comma after, um, after that because format date takes the um, date string first and then it wants to know well, how do you want to write it well I'd like a day I would like month in full and I would like year in full and that's that bit and the country code the two-digit country code is GB and at the end of all that you need to close the brackets that's why it's coming up a little error just then now it's gone sort of green. So here in the example, I've just taken this really, the, the example there has France, FR, so June comes back, it's French. Press OK, press apply, and now you can see that the dates are um, written in a more user-friendly way. So now we've got the uh, sort of format date, I'll have a look at that. What I'd like to do is filter these labels. Um, I'd like to filter them based on this magnitude value, where it's 3.5, which is um, well, quite high for the, for the UK, that is. Um, so uh, I, I want that to kind of stand out, that 3.5. Um, so anything greater than 3, let's say I'm interested in, um, I want to display that as a different type of label, perhaps drawn in red and bold and that sort of thing, and change when, it, when the other labels turn on and off when you zoom in and out. So in order to set a sort of filter on the labels, make a class of labels, again, go back to properties on the layer. And here, instead of single labels, it'll be rule-based labeling. At the moment, there's a default rule, and the default rule will work when I click apply on all of them. Just turn them all on or off. So let's just uh, call it default label. Okay. That's basically all of them. The plus sign down here allows you to add another class, a filter. So let's call this high magnitude. Okay, let's just leave it, leave it as that for a second so you can just see what we've done here. So there's two label classes we've, we've created, um, but they're both the um, high, high magnitude doesn't, doesn't have anything in it effectively. There's no filter, there's, there's not even any text. In fact, if we turned off default, labeling nothing appears for high magnitude because there's nothing defined there it's just an empty sort of class an empty filter so let's start defining the filter well let's go back to default labeling and look at our what the actual label looks like so you can see that in order to get magnitude we use this substring um, value title counted from the left uh, sorry uh, taking a bit of string out of out of another larger string, uh, 25 characters in, and then taking four characters out, and that's how we get that that um, uh, what the m value is, sort of 3.5 or you know 1.50 or whatever. So I'm going to copy that, and in um, my high magnitude, I'll set that as a filter. I'll say which greater than sorry, greater than three. So when the magnitude is greater than three, that's going to be high magnitude. And when it is greater than three, 
draw it bold, a bit bigger, in red, and got a placement maybe, offset for the point. Let's draw it just above and a few points up, a few pixels up. So I'm just playing around with placement just to make it really kind of stand out. So let's apply this. So, um, so what, 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 what's happening here is that you, you, you might think, well, didn't really do anything. Well, the problem is we've got default labeling on as well, and that's everything. So if I turn off default labeling and click apply, the, um, oh, it's not drawing still. Oh, the, okay, so my high magnitude, although there's a filter, you see how there's no text. This is the, the error I've made here. I was rushing this and didn't select another option. See how the text, this text, that tells you what is actually going to be drawn as the uh, um, label. When high magnitude, I have no text, there's nothing set. So let's just drop them. This is it. I have to put something in here. So let's just set the, uh, well, for uh, just for the sake now, set the label to pub date. So we're going to have a different field. So now you see, I get this value appear there. If I turn on default labeling as well, I get them all. So do make sure you select all the options there or else um, suddenly you find yourself like I did with nothing drawing. Um, but you can see it's in red. So we're starting to go somewhere. We've got, we've got red. Anything greater than the three is drawn in red and it's above the um, feature point, the point class, which is good. These ones are written in black to the right. Although I would like this red text to be exactly the same as this. Okay, then go back to default labeling, click on the expression and just copy all of that. Go back to high magnitude, go to expression and paste it over. So now, it's it's the same. We've got different placement. Don't forget, I changed the placement. I altered the y-axis to go up, made it minus four or what have you, and I also um, put it above the point. But apart from the placement, everything else is the is the same. You know, in terms of uh, how it contains in a new line and how it's written and stuff. So, but again, the, one of the things going on here is if I turn off high magnitude and press apply, I still get this written. So that's not logically quite correct. So, and in fact, when I turn on high magnitude, because it, the, um, so there's some conflict going on there, it doesn't even draw the red this, this time. So what do, we, what do we need to do? Well, in high magnitude, we've got this as a filter. Let's take that, stick it in default labeling, and make it opposite, make it less than three, actually, less than or equal to three. Press OK, press apply. Now see what happens. So this, the, the logic now is correct in terms of high magnitude, let's turn it off, nothing's labeled that's high magnitude, i.e. I've defined as greater than three. If I turn that back on and remove default labeling, I now have only labeled my high magnitude. So if I zoom out, I will only get that text written because I think it's only in that one place. It's quite a few uh, earthquake going on actually around the UK. Um, so, and these are all near Leighton Buzzard, I think, yeah, Lynn Slade, Leighton Buzzard. So these four here are still there, but what I would like to do maybe is as I zoom in, um, I'd like that label to turn on for the, um, black font. So this one, I'm going to set a scale. So I'm going to set a scale ra range on default labeling. And let's say, I don't know, about 50,000 or something. And, and you can zoom in close. <coughs> Press OK, apply. So it's now at 1 to 40,000 roughly. If I zoom out, it goes to 1 to 80. Now the label's turned off. And if I zoom in, the label's turned back on again. So there you go. So um, that was a right hand mouse click on there. You go to real base labeling. Don't forget, you can add more classes and, and stuff if you want and, and just run with it, lots of options. Also, you can select one and remove it with this minus subtract button. And it's also a style which you can save and uh, or load someone else's that they've created or save, you know, what have you, and pass on to someone else. So um, I hope that's useful, thank you.